Hey everyone, it's Lexi coming in tonight. I'm the Millennial Matchmaker. Make sure that you find me on IG at the underscore Millennial Matchmaker. And you could like and subscribe to this channel if you like my content and like what you see. I'm here to talk about the modern woman, but tonight I'm here for the gentleman. I'm gonna tell you guys the kind of women that you need to avoid. Yes, I said it, the kind of women that you need to avoid. So sit back and relax and enjoy. And yes, you ladies, if this is you, make sure that you guys sit on your seatbelt. Sit tight because I'm about to give them some real knowledge tonight. And if it's you, don't try to get mad. Don't try to say, oh, Lexi, just telling lies. No, I'm going to give it to you real. Gentlemen, sit back. This is the kind of women you need to avoid. First, avoid at all costs the bougie chick. Yes, guys, the bougie chick. You don't want bougie, you want classy, okay? So that means if she's out and about and she's trying to be a social climber and she's trying to keep up with the Joneses and she's just a little bit scale up from maybe hood or maybe trailer park trash or maybe, you know, Latina problems, then you guys need to really watch how she acts in general. If she looks like she's a step and a hop and a skipping away from cussing somebody out at any given moment, run fellas if she looks like her nails are just a little bit too long for you know a real event that you could take her to run fellas if you know that all of a sudden she can get hood in five seconds and she's going to do it out with your employee with your employees or your co-workers or somewhere where it's just not going to be a good idea for your career and they could go up in flames run fellas because the bougie chick is just a step down from the hood chick or the trailer park chick, or the Latina gangster chick. So you're going to have some major problems with this kind of woman because she might not know when to turn it on and off. So make sure that she's classy and not bougie, okay? Bougie means she could take them heels off, she could take that, that Vaseline on, and she can knock somebody out. And you don't want someone that's a liability. You don't want someone that you got to be bailing out. You don't want someone where you got to explain to your coworkers and your employees, oh, I'm sorry, my, my girl got a little gangster. That's not sexy. That's not cute. Leave that for high school. You don't want to bring that in the real world. And you darn sure don't want to bring it in the professional world. So if she's bougie and she's not classy, you got to run. And it's kind of easy to tell. You going to know when Southside's going to come out. You know, if South, if South Side starts riding and y'all in north of town, you're going to have a big problem, fellas. So make sure she's seriously classy. How do you test this? Get her mad a little bit. See how she acts in public. You know, see how she orders her food. See how she looks at other women. See how she handles situations. See how she is at her job. See what kind of job she's at. If she's a hairdresser and she's able to get hood every day, that's a scary place to be, right? Because you know that she got her own business so she can act however she wants to act. So a lot of these women, they're in jobs or they're in spaces where they really don't have to save face. And you don't want to be with that kind of women. So the next one you want to get with is avoid the toxic, crazy woman. Yes, fellas. If she thinks that you looking at a woman or you looking at every woman every time they walk by, if you guys are not even able to go to grocery shopping because you try to look down aisle 12 and she thinks you looking down somebody's aisle behind, then you need to run from this woman. That means she's so insecure that she's going to make your life a living hell. Yes. Your woman, your woman is going to be toxic. If she's constantly texting you and you don't hit her back in five minutes, she's a complete lunatic and she's going to be this way and imagine kids with this woman she's going to use them as pawns she's going to use you in every type of situation you're in she's going to try and figure out what you're doing at all times even when you leave her you're glued to the psycho but once you sleep with a psycho especially if you impregnate a psycho and if you marry a psycho you were going to sign up to years your lifetime of psycho there's nothing you could do about it yeah i don't care oh but it was just so fire you know the head game was on point i know what you guys say Mm-hmm. I know what you guys say, why you guys end up with these psychos. Oh, but it was so... No. No. It's going to be real psycho when you've got 35 missing messages, 29 calls, and you can't even finish your business meeting. And you can't even grow as a man with a psycho. You can't even get the job done as a psycho with a psycho. You can't get anything done as productive as it needs to be to be a man when you get with a woman that doesn't understand how to handle herself. 
This woman's insecure. This woman makes up things in her head. This woman starts believing that you are with the milk lady. This woman's going to believe that you're sleeping with everybody, okay? Family members. Everybody's going to know she's crazy. You will know she's crazy. So make sure you run. Run from the psycho gentleman and you're going to have a better life. The third thing you're going to have to watch out for is the social media queen. Yes, I see it all the time. I was out in Tennessee, Nash. I was out in Nashville the other weekend, and I promise you, this man took his beautiful girlfriend out to a nice dinner. I mean, we we're at a nice brunch area, um, and it was just beautiful. And as soon as she gets outside, she cans him the phone. And gentlemen, yes, you know what that means. It was picture time. He had to go from boyfriend to photographer. And when I tell you he was there at least 30 minutes to get her good shot and her good angle, and Missy did not care how long it took. She kept telling him how bad his photo was and how he needs to learn how to be a better photographer. Yes, these are the social media queens. Ladies, I don't care if you got 3 million subscribers or more. We don't want to be with a man or a man should not want to be with a woman that is too worried about her social media that he's done paid a hundred dollars for your steak and your i gotta watch my words but your selfish behind decided to take photos and turn it into your experience instead of our experience and it's just a selfish woman the social media queen is a selfish woman i get it we gotta post we got to post. We got to give people back. You know, you got to show that you had a great time. But if she's out here, I mean, I've literally seen it where she's done elbowed you in the neck. She's done elbowed you in the neck because she's trying to get that reel going. She's trying to get the reel going and she's she's photoing it. and She's got to add the music and she's done she's done elbowed you and 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 everybody's looking at this woman because she, she can't even eat the meal. She's for, she's taking photos of the meal. Okay, I'm guilty of taking pictures of my food, but never when I'm on a date. You do it with your girlfriends, because your girlfriends understand. Like I said, remember how I told you when we were with my sissy Tiffy? Make sure your man is your lover and not your friend. Do all that social media crap when you're out with your girlfriends. When you're with your man, you give him undivided attention. You're at attention, okay? And he does not want to see you taking pictures of the meal that he just bought. So social media queens... Don't do it with your man. If you want to take a selfie with your man, that's fine. And you're posting him. That's okay because he's a part of the experience. But if you're doing it to be, you know, out with him and you're taking pictures of the food and you're outside and you want to just take pictures of yourself as if you went by yourself, you need a life. And your social media needs to be shut down. Somebody call Instagram, call Facebook and tell them to shut down your junk because you don't deserve a post. You don't deserve to be on Instagram. You don't deserve to be on these stories because you're taking advantage of people's time. Next one is, yeah, the dancer, the call girl, or just the hoochie, right? This kind of girl can, can move her body like you've never seen. This kind of girl is going to have you in a trance. This kind of girl might tell you everything you want to hear. This kind of girl leads with seduction. I've told you, gentlemen, and this is probably the only one that all of you guys fall for, is the seductress, right? She is just sensual. She is everything that you think of when you think of a sexy night. She's erotic. She's got all of this sexual energy, and men love it. But as a result, you guys get stuck. You guys get in those claws. You guys get brought in and there's no getting out. Yes, she's then clawed you in and it's hard to get out. And like I said, then when you're sitting with the marketing Kelly on her date, all you can think about is Miss Sensual, Madame of the Night. And that's dangerous, fellas, right? Because we know that one head is a lot dumber than the other head, right? So we don't want to follow dumb head, right? Because he's going to get you guys spending money you don't have, or getting caught up in drama that you don't need, and probably just ending up sad and alone. And maybe a red pillar, because you guys get mad at these women, and you knew from the jet get-go she was too good at what she does. Any woman that's way too good with her sexuality and can lead with her sensuality and she's confident in doing it, that means she's had success doing it in the past. So it ain't her first rodeo. So gentlemen, get a brain and not that brain and make sure you get a real woman, okay? The next thing you want to get with and stay away from, I mean, is the masculine woman. Yes, she's the masculine woman. Do I have some masculine tendencies sometimes? Yes, and I'm seriously working on it. You need to make sure though that she is not just masculine all the time. Yes, 
that means that she might have, you know, braids, you know, the cornrows going back, like, you know, and she, sometimes these women even have deep voices. Have you heard it? You know, with these men, you guys thinking that you have this beautiful picture online, you swiped right, you're like, mm, this girl look good, I'm gonna call Gabby. You call Gabby, hey girl, what's up? And you hear, hey, what's up? You're like, Gabby? You start hitting the FaceTime button because you can't believe that this is the girl. You're like, wait a second, I did something wrong here. Let me call her. And you see, it's beautiful Gabby, but the sad part is that her voice sounds like Barry White. And before you know it, you're like, you don't know if you should talk to her, if y'all should start singing a duet of can't get enough for your love, babe. <laughs> so be careful of the masculine woman. She's going to be you know, masculine in her ways. I mean, she's probably going to have her wall up like a dude. You know, she's talking to you like a dude. You know, she's driving like a dude. You know, one hand on the wheel. You know, shoulders bouncing. And, you know, she's whipping that thing going 880. I see women sometimes going 100 miles an hour trying to outdo the men. I see them just peeling like they're on Fast and the Furious. And I say, get your behind over in the right lane. You need to be over here with the tractor trailers. But over there, you trying to be over there with Speedy Gonzalez. You are not go speed racer. So you need to get your behind over in the slower lane and be a lady and stop trying to be a man. Trying to outrun people. It happened to me one time. And you know how it ended? You know how it ended? It ended with a whiplash. She, she rammed me in the back. I saw this chick coming 100 miles an hour. And you know what? She was trying, she was trying to speed up on me. She was trying to cut me off. She ended up whiplashing me. And she called a five-car pileup on the highway. And her thing was totaled. And I just looked at her after I got my neck braced. You know, I... Had to, my neck was hurting and the ambulance was coming, but I still had enough time to look at her. And I said, what were you doing? What were you doing? You know, and of course, that masculine energy, you know, she was, she was, you know, cute in the body, cute in the face, but that voice, you know, I had to get to work. I had to get to work. And I said, look, now we all ain't getting to work because yos. Don't bring me back to that day because I was going to ambulance mad and I had to get my piece of word in. And there was another Chinese man out there and he was cussing her out too. And we both was angry because she had called a five car pile up trying to be a man. So these masculine men, these masculine women guys, run, run. Because they call, they cause pile ups on the highway. They cause major accidents and they do a lot of, they cause, you know, you start thinking if you would bury white. And then after when you try to talk to her, you know, you try to be, you know, romantic. She's such a dude. And there's some men that like this. I've actually spoken with a man, actually a successful man that said, I liked a woman that, you know, could, could, could handle everything on the farm. And he said that she was laying hay, and that she was riding that tractor and that she was able to, you know, so more power to you. Some men like this. He said she could change a tire. She could put engine in the car. Some men think it's super sexy. So I'm not going to talk about all men, but most men don't want a masculine woman. And if you have this kind of woman, I'm talking for the general audience, run because it could be a problem. A big problem. Sometimes a problem on the highway. Just saying. The next woman that you want to deal with is the lady with sexual problems. Yes, this lady has sexual problems. That means she either likes sex way too much or she's a prude and doesn't like it enough. Sex has to be a healthy balance, ladies and gentlemen. It's a part of life. It's like eating. It's like sleeping. You have to have sex in order to have a healthy life. You know, studies show how stress can go up. There are, yes, there are other ways to really stress, but don't tell me that yoga or a vacation or even eating some chocolate can compare to sex, right? So if this woman has some issues dealing with her sexual life, you're going to have issues throughout the course of the entire marriage and through a lifetime. And it's probably going to end because as we said, as in lovers, not friends, that you need that in order to keep a relationship going strong. So if she likes sex too much, watch out. She might be just be in it because she's trying to make you think that she's something and then it's going to die off. She might just be trying to get pregnant and it's going to die off when she has a baby. And she might just be trying to use you to uh to get something done to be manipulative with her sex and that's why she likes it so much and it's gonna die off just watch out when it's too much because no woman really wants to have sex that much unless she's a porn star and she's probably on some kind of pills to get herself going or she's done had 13 vagina surgeries to keep it cranking and it ain't falling out of her then there's something wrong with if she's got excess sex problems so make sure that you're watching out for that gentleman and for the prude 
for the woman that does not want to have sex, for the woman that's okay with living in her own room and y'all don't even sleep in the same room. She tries to fall asleep on the couch or fall asleep in the guest room or she finds ways to avoid sex already in the relationship. Run, fellas, sex doesn't come back. It's something that usually when it's gone, it's gone. Yes, you hear all these therapies and these retreats. Oh, you could bring it back. You could bring it back. Oh, you know, you guys could fall back in love with each other. Yes, I believe that emotionally you can. However, when sex has been gone for too long, a lot of times, even if you bring it back, it's still not going to be to a healthy amount. You might be at, you know, once a month or once a week just because it's been deprived for so long. So don't get in deprivation. You know, get in a healthy sexual relationship with someone. And if they use sex as a as a, as a manipulation tool or you're not getting it because of this or you're not doing it because of that or you you know they try to use you and get mad now somebody's genuinely mad work through that but if sex is used as an object in order to withhold someone's well-being or because of you're angry about something or to get your way it's never going to work run from that woman run from her and this is going to tie into the next kind of woman you need to avoid avoid the victim yes guys avoid the victim now, the victim is probably someone that's been sexually abused. It's probably someone that's been physically abused. It's probably someone that's been mentally abused. Somewhere, the abuse has come in, and she's gotten so comfortable in this role as the victim. The victim is dangerous, man. Very dangerous. If you hear a woman start telling you stories about her past where she was the victim, she was victimized, especially if the other person ended up in jail, I'm not saying that there are not valid reasons that this happens. However, the victim tends to have multiple reasons and multiple accounts and she continues to bring it up and she continues to talk about how she was victimized run fellas this means this woman knows the system very well she's used the system very well somebody's probably sitting behind bars because of something that happened or maybe didn't happen because yes some women do lie and then before you know it you've done falling in love with this woman trying to be captain save a hoe and before you know it she's going to victimize by on you so make sure if it's always what was me what was me this happened to me that happened to me all of this that means this woman could trip and fall by her own mistake and then go and blame the city and say, oh, there was a chip in the road. There was something wrong with the road. It wasn't me. It wasn't me. Oh, that's the victim. Fellas, run from this woman. She's dangerous. She's a poison. And what she's going to do is be a victim to you because these victims love believing they're not the problem. They never take accountability for their actions. They never take accountability for what they've done. And you're going to end up footing the bill. You're going to end up pay playing the time. And you're going to end up being the one behind bars for this victim. So make sure that you don't get the victim. Make sure you get a woman that's going to take accountability for what she's done. Talked about her mistakes. That could be a little bit vulnerable and say, hey, I messed up here or I messed up there and that's the kind of woman you want you don't want the victim another woman I'm going to talk about yes and you guys are going to get mad the modern American woman the reason why I say America and this is a very stereotypical thing so I can't say everyone I'm American myself you know and I know a lot of women that are American that aren't this way however I do come from immigrant parents so it's a little different the reason why I call it the modern American woman is that the woman that just might not have respect for her parents, yes, or authority. You know, you see this a lot in America, the reason why I say that, because when you go to Jamaica, when you go to um, the Latin countries, when you go to Africa, when you go to India, when you go to every other country, usually except for Western, so let me call it the Western woman. The Western woman has been raised, and I know it's going to piss a lot of people off, to where they could you see it all the time, right? They're cussing out their mom. They're cussing out their dad. They're cussing out everybody. They just have no respect for authority because they didn't have to. A lot of times in these Western societies, it's very common to see parents, kids talking back, being rude to older people, you know, and this is something that just doesn't happen in other countries because you get killed. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that it, it's not that we don't want to. It's not that we don't think about it. But in Jamaica, I'd probably literally be killed. You cannot talk to your authorities that way. Be careful of this woman, the Western woman. And like I said, I'm American as well. 
I'm not bashing the country. I'm just saying there's Western ideologies where it's okay to talk to people any kind of way. This is scary, guys. If there's no respect for elder, if there's no respect for parents, what makes you think she's going to respect your parents? What makes you think that when she's not with you or if she breaks up with you, she doesn't cuss them out? What makes you think she's going to have this behavior when it comes to your family? So make sure that this woman has respect for authority. You want to make sure that she handles you like a woman in the military, how she handles her sergeant or a captain. There's always yes, sir, no, sir yes ma'am no ma'am you want to make sure this woman is a gem and not just pretending to be a gem but watch how she talks to her mother watch how she talks to her father watch how she talks to her grandparents watch how she talks to the elders in her community because that's going to be a great indicator on how she's going to talk to you and your family and your people so make sure she's always respectful and that means she can be rude to, she can be rude to her peers she can be rude to her peers but if it's her boss or anyone in authority the police um her parents, her grandparents, um, older people in the community, if she's not doing anything but showing them the utmost respect, run, fellas. This woman is going to be trouble. She's going to be terrible. And she's going to be work, piece of work. She's going to be rude to your peoples. And it's not going to be funny having to explain. And there's a lot of these Western women, and I see it all the time, they are just... Gentlemen... You know what I'm talking about. And ladies, if you want to be honest, seriously, look in the mirror and look at yourself and say, yeah, I'm that woman. I have been rude. I cuss my mom out all the time. Men, if you guys stay with a woman that has no respect for her mother, you know, no respect for her authority, doesn't matter what the situation is, just disrespectful. Just don't complain when it happens to you. And don't become a red pillar when it happens to you. She showed you. I'm not saying if you're the same way with your family, that's fine. Get together. But if this is how she's going to be, make sure you run. The next woman you want to be careful of is the petty Betty. Yes, Betty is always petty. That means that you could have something she wants to get done or you could have something that needs to happen and she's come up with some petty excuse why she needs you instead. Yes, and you know, deep down inside, she's got that smirk. She's got that chuckle on the inside. She's just a petty Betty. That means only thing she could do to mess up your day, to mess up your night, to mess up your life, petty Betty's going to do it. Petty's there. She's always going to stoop to the lowest level. She's always going to hit below the belt. She's always going to try to make you feel less than. She's always going to make you feel like she's smarter than you. She's always going to be petty because that's how she gets her power. Make sure you run from the petty Betty. If she can't humble herself and say, you know what? I didn't like that you did that. You know, babe, I really wish you'd done this. Um, I really just wanted you to stay with me or something, just be honest about what it is she wanted to do. Because a lot of times, Petty Betty has ulterior motive. She doesn't really want to make you feel bad, but that's what she goes to. And it's kind of like I've been told that I result to humor. So instead of dealing with the issue or stating that, hey, I was bad about this, I might crack a joke about it, but deep down I'm hurt about it. So some people resort to whatever it is that makes them feel in a comfortable place. And Petty Betty just results to pettiness. So make sure that Petty Betty is not somebody you after. Because if she stoops low, you got to check her on that. Check her the first time, gentlemen. And that's where you guys get wrong. Check a woman the first time. Because when you check her at the gates, just like a man, once you do it the first time, they're going to have a less likely chance to repeat it. If you let her keep doing it, you're going to have a high chance of not getting Petty Betty out of it. So check her when she does it. Say, hey, I'm a grown man. You're not going to handle me like you do your friends. I know what you're trying to pull, and don't pull it with me. I'm not going to do it with the petty game, okay? So just make sure that it doesn't happen again. It's going to happen this one time, and I'm doing it because I like you or I love you or whatever it is, but don't continue to do this. I need you to tell me what it is you need, or you're going to have to wait till I get to you, okay? Gentlemen, I'm giving you guys some tips on how to deal with her. If she disrespect you, disrespect that girl and leave her. It's like, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I didn't say disrespect her, but you need to leave her. You need to leave. Or you need to talk to her again. If it doesn't come through, then Petty Betty's going to have to go. Another woman you're going to have to run away from is the monkey brancher. She monkey branches, she social climbs. That means when you're in a group of your friends and you're with your colleagues or you're with men that's just as good as you and you get up to go get the wine, she's sliding on closer to Mr. Colleague Mike. That means she's a social climber. She's trying to get better. She might even use your own circle to get better. She's trying to level up. She's trying to boss up. Be careful that the woman that's with you wants to be with you. Bring her around your friends. Bring her around your boss. Bring her around your colleagues. See how she acts. If she has that look in her eyes and she's laughing just a little bit too long and she's trying too hard to get them to impress her and then y'all are on the ride home and she's bringing up, oh, <laughs> Mike was so funny. <laughs> Give her that look. 
because you know good and well that he wasn't that funny. She was just trying to social climb. So make sure you're not with the social climber and it happens a lot more than you guys think. Make sure that woman is only there to make you shine, make you look good, make you look great on her arm and make you sound good. Always talking about how great you are and making you good in front of your friends. It doesn't matter if you guys just got in an argument. Her role is to make you shine. And if she's there to make herself shine and to talk to other, all these other people for her own personal gain. And gentlemen, you know, of course you want her to be nice. Of course you want her to be charming. Of course you want her to be witty. That's why you're with her. However, if it's gone too far and it looks like she's there for them and she could leave with them at any given point with a little bit too much drinks, you need to leave that chick. That means you ain't got no control over her now and you darn sure ain't gonna have no control over her 10 years down in the marriage. She's a monkey brancher. She's a social climber. Leave her where she was. Make sure that her goal is you and only you and that everywhere she takes you is for you, okay? And make sure anywhere she goes with you, whether it's her events, that she's still with you and making sure you're making her shine she makes you shine as well and that should be her only priority anything else let it go gentlemen of course you know that i could not be on my second to last one without mentioning the gold digger you need to run from the gold digger that means this woman now when i say that a man's supposed to be the provider and paying up the bills when I say that, I mean that only if this woman is depend trying to have children and be a housewife, right? Now, if you guys have no kids and you guys just have a dog and you think you're going to just sit at home and order everything out of the catalog and bring everybody in, and you have no budget, right? Because it doesn't matter how rich you are. A man is always going to respect a woman with a budget. He's always going to respect a woman that respects his money. If she doesn't respect her own money, she can't respect his money. And it's just going to be ridiculous. She just wants to spend all of your money all of the most luxury events, always trying to keep up with somebody, always trying to get the most expensive thing, and she's just digging for gold. So there's a difference for wanting a man that's a provider and you're really a housewife and you're having two plus children by this man. Because let me tell you something, one kid is not enough. Yes, guys, I'm a single mother. I've got my whole life together. I'm established financially, uh, emotionally, everything I'm established. And I have one child. Yeah, is it hard? I'm not going to lie. It's hard, but it's very manageable. Meaning that if I had a husband, it would be even easier to do it. And I'm still doing it by myself. So you need to have at least two plus children before you think you're going to be laid up and not having a job. So listen, it's very manageable one kid. So a gold digger is somebody that either has just one kid and still wants to spend all your money and act like Money grows on trees and just uses it. And her goal is just digging for gold. The kid was for gold. Everything was for gold. And that's her only motive. It doesn't mean it's a woman that likes to have finer things in life, but she still also is all about you. If she's all about you, then she's not just digging for gold. She's digging for you as well. She's digging for her family. She's digging for your family. She's digging for your emotions, what you need, your support, uh, your business something you need in, at home, anything. She's there for you. She loves you. She's your partner in crime. She respects you. That's different. However, if her only intention always goes back to the almighty dollar, you need to run. You need to get rid of this woman because you'll always know a gold digger because everything always results back to money. Money and spending money usually. It's not saving it. It's spending it, right? Because gold diggers are going to be the one that talk to their friends about you know, it don't matter what he treats you like, he's got money. Really? It doesn't matter what he said to you, if he's got money, that's a gold digger. It doesn't matter, girl, I don't care if he's fat, I don't care if he's ugly, I don't care if he's this, I don't care if he's that. And you'll see women doing that. You'll see, you'll hear women doing that. If the qualities don't matter, if the looks don't matter, if the connection doesn't matter, if nothing else matters, just his bank account, and what she's looking for is a sugar daddy and surely not a husband. There's a big difference between a sugar daddy. A sugar daddy already understands that when he's going in. When he makes his seeking arrangements, he already knows what he's getting into. However, a modern man on the market needs to run from this kind of woman because no, all women are not this way. No, all women don't want to just spend all your money. No, all women don't need the fanciest things. I myself am the coupon queen and the budget queen. So yes, I want to provide her, but I darn sure I'm not going to spend money that I don't need to spend on. I will get the cheapest route possible for the best quality. And that's just how it should be. If she just wants to spend yours and she doesn't want to spend hers, 
run from the gold digger, run from her because you want to have a lifetime. And you, unless you're a billionaire, millionaire, then that's fine. However, even in the millionaire level, if you're in the lower millions, you're still going to not want a gold digger because you could easily get in the hundred thousand air or be even in the bankruptcy air because these women know how to spend your junk. And last but not least, you got to run from the feminist and she's a I'm every woman and she hates men and she's bashing men. Look back at her social media posts. Look back and see who she's following and if these channels or whatever she's doing is bashing men. You need to run away, fellas, because that means she has no respect for your value in her life. That means that she thinks that she could do it by herself. That means she doesn't need you. She doesn't need any man. And she counsels all her girls that you don't need a man. Do you want a woman that's independent? Absolutely. You want to know that she could take care of the home, that the place won't be on fire when you go off to work. However, if she thinks that she could do everything without you, and I mean everything, then run, fellas, because you're not going to be able to persuade this woman how to really see your worth. You're not going to want to explain to this woman. She needs to see you, and like I said, captain, co-captain, president, vice president, yin, yang. There's always king or queen. There's always going to be a lesser value, and that should be the woman. The man has to lead. The woman has to follow. That's how it's been in every single profession. There's one leader, and there's one co-leader, Batman and Robin. Everybody knows Batman was higher than Robin, okay? So the husband has to be that, and a feminist has difficulty in grasping her mind around that. She wants to believe she's equal. You believe you equal? Guess what? Two women... Two men can pick up a refrigerator. Two average men usually can move a refrigerator to the other room. Two average women, you think that my arms and my body is going to be able to move a big bug behind fridge? No. So we're not created equal. Okay? We're not created equal because I'm not even going to try. Unless it's this woman bodybuilder that's been on creatine and some other bodybuilding pumps, then she's probably going to be able to lift the refrigerator. But I can't. So we're not made equal. If two average men can lift it, but two average women can't, then ding, ding, ding. That means there's something that's wrong with equality, guys. There ain't, we were not made equal. Don't blame me. Blame the creator, okay? Yes, mentally, I believe we have the same intelligence capacity. Do I believe our brain makeup is different? No. I believe sometimes women, we're even smarter as a women. Yes, I said it. We can be smarter. We can still do the math equation. We can do the science equation. We can do everything the same amount of a man. However, physically, there are different things that men are just created to do more. Physically, they can lift. They're stronger. There's other things that they could do that we need to acknowledge and we need to be sure that we know that they are the leader. They can do everything that we could do except for have kids, um, but they can do everything we can do and they can do it at average size and lift more and do more, okay? You guys get what I'm saying, it's late, okay? It's late, but I love you guys. You guys know what to stay away from. Gentlemen, make sure that you took notes. I love you guys. Like and subscribe to my channel. Bye, have a great night.